Okay. Uh, so, this is crazy. I'm in my underpants in the water, as you can see. Uh, I won't show you my underpants. So I just pulled up to check on my hog log this morning. Right as I pulled up to it, I didn't even have my camera out. And my, fir my first pole was empty, bait was off. Second pole, pulled up to the boat. Rod, bank pole just started bending. Bank pole just started bending over and over and over and over and over until it touched the ground. And then, believe it or not, cracked right at the base, right where it was driven and sort of wedged in between these rocks. Uh, I blame the rocks. So it cracked, went underwater. God, he's still pulling. It went underwater. I could see the air bubbles, a trail of air bubbles, as um, as the fish that was on this thing uh, drug it across the bottom. So I pulled all my clothes off and jumped in the jumped in the lake here and uh, swam over where the bubbles were and dove down and. Found, found the pole within the first couple of tries. Now this fish is still on here. Um, I can tell he's got some decent size, but he's tired. So I haven't even pulled him out of the water yet to get a look. So that's what I'm gonna do here, or try to. Oh, oh, oh. oh, he's right by my legs. Oh, he's a nice one, nice flathead. Hold on one second. Nice flat out of here. Uh, all right, what should I do? So I'm gonna get him in the boat, um, get my shorts on and get him weighed, take a photo and get him back in the water. He is worn out. He's a big guy. <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna get the scale out and measure him. Get this nice looking fish. Oh, yeah, looks like just under 13 pounds. Uh, the biggest one I caught so far in this area was just over 13 pounds, uh, but an awesome fish nonetheless. And uh, I guess he must have been pulling on that, uh, he was probably pulling on that bank pole all night long, which was wedged between some rocks, which is why it probably fractured the way it did. Um, I'll talk more about that shortly after I get this fish back in the water. All right, got some photos now. Let's get this nice, nice big flatty. Oh, look, he's got a snail stuck to his belly. What? It's crazy. Let's get this nice big flatty back in the water where he belongs. Thanks for making me take a swim. I'm glad. I'm glad the water was warm. I know you're tired. You're tuckered out. Come on. Start to pull. Move, move some water through his gills here. Okay, starting to sort of bite on me, starting to turn his body a little bit. I'm waiting for him to make that big turn. Okay, you can do it. You can, there you go. There you go. Pulled away and swam down. Nice fish great fish all right now I want to talk a little bit about how and why this thing broke this is um a hog log uh, bank pole which I've had you know good luck with um, I think they're a great quality product even though this one broke I still think they're a high quality product and uh, still completely believe in the system even though um, one of my hog log poles got broken this morning. Um, I'm gonna chalk that mostly up to the environment in which I set it, which was um, some really sharp riprap, and um, you know they're designed to go into mud, clay, earth of some kind, not um, sharp, jagged rocks pinched tightly in a vice-like situation. 
uh, and then having uh, you know a large animal pull against those sharp rocks all night. Um, it broke off right at the point where it met um, the rocks, so it was obviously pounded in probably too far and probably too tightly against some rocks that would probably be too sharp. So I kind of worried about that when I put the put the pole in in the first place. Sorry I didn't get the first part on video. I, was, I just I wasn't even recording anything this morning. I was just kind of out running lines and and uh, getting ready to maybe catch a couple of crappie. I was checking my poles. That said, I got to take a nice morning dip and uh, and caught a very nice flathead. Got some good photos. Anyway, I still believe. In the mud bums, still believe in the in the hog log. You know, out of many many outings, I've now only had um, a couple of small issues, uh, including one bent hook, which was again due to environmental issues. Uh, it's mentioned in another one of my videos. I'll, I'll I'll put a link to it down there. And then this one, which I um, you know I'm gonna chalk it up to user error. Um, I really didn't think that this type of plastic would snap clean off like that, um, but you know, I'll, I'm, I live pretty close to the guys to the supply shack there. Um, I still fully believe in the product and fully intend to continue to use it and fully intend to buy more. Um, I think everyone who's interested at all in diddy pole fishing or bank pole fishing depends on where you're from, what it's called. Um, if you're interested in it at all. You should try these rods out. I'm not sponsored, obviously, in any way. No, I received no, no monetary or otherwise compensation to say that. I just think they're a great company. Um, local, started from nothing, built it all the way up. Um, I think that's awesome. Um, and I think that uh, we all need to support small companies like that. Um, we've all had rods, reels, some piece of our fishing gear break by brands or manufacturers that are much more well known or longer lived or or have a longer history um, than the mud bums and um, that's just something that happens with when you when you fish hard and when you um, you know when you when you put your gear through a lot of abuse when when the gear is so good that you expect it to be able to stand up to the abuse, you kind of abuse it a little more than you probably should. Um, so maybe that's the lesson here. But the good part is, I still got that fish, even though I had to go swimming after it. Um, now, my pants are a little wet, and as you can kind of see, the wetness is mostly around the crotch area, which is because I was down into my boxer shorts when I when I went swimming. So it kind of looks like I peed myself right now. Small price to prey. It was a really good fish. So, I don't know, I guess that's it.